gifts of the spirit or the fruits of the spirit rather are not seasonal. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not part time. And so if these are the fruits of the spirit, then no matter what we go through in life, we should still exude joy. Mm -hmm. We should exude peace, we should exude kindness and all of that. And so even going back to when Jesus would say, you know, the peace that I give you surpasses all understanding. And so even the things that you cannot comprehend in this world, the things that you can't even wrap your mind around, like, God, why is this happening? But there is a peace that is upon you because of your where your anchor is in. Even when you're going through depression or hopelessness, there's a narrative you're listening to. And there's a thought, there's a whole thought process going on. So now how do you hear the thoughts of God? You now speak it. Right. And it's beautiful because even in psychology, one of the ways that they calm anxiety is what do you hear? Like take some time to just pause and what are the things that you're hearing? And so to hear your own self mm. declaring the truth of God's word, I think that is so phenomenal. And I also think just being aware aware of what is that area of hopelessness that I'm, I'm having this like um, issue with because sometimes it's so vague that it keeps us in a depressive or hopeless state longer than we should mm -hmm. and I know for me I remember um, more recently actually I think with all the mass shootings I found mm -hmm. myself feeling very heavy oh, and yeah. down and literally was one time in prayer and it's like the Lord is like what is bothering you? Yeah. I couldn't even have language for it. I just felt yeah. heavy. Yeah. And I was, then I had to take a moment, like, what is really bothering me? And it was this idea, I was like, God, I feel like there are people, you know, going through loss right now. And so the more I put language to it, the more God was able to speak to me and give me wisdom. And then my hope is now anchored in the Lord, recognizing that his thoughts yeah. are not mine. There's something about speaking out loud the promises of God. And not even just that, about just speaking out loud to your father, right? Because prayer for me, it humbles me, you know? Cause sometimes when you're so used to, maybe if you're used to having conversations about your complaints, right? It, it, brings you in a mindset that is very narrow because that's all you're thinking of, that's all you see. But when you pray, you are so humbled by, first of all, I'm praying to God. I'm praying to the King of Kings. Like, and that is also my father. I, it just, it does something for me every time. It just reminds me, reassures me that I'm covered, um, that I'm seen, that I'm protected, that I'm loved. And so, yeah, it's, and I think that's why even when Jesus, when the disciples asked Jesus, like, teach us how to pray. And the model prayer was really just giving them this format of what happens in prayer. And the very first thing is our Father who art in heaven. Like, recognize that the person you're speaking to is your Father and recognize he is not where you are. He has a different vision over everything. Even someone was having, asking me um, just from a biblical perspective and they were like, why is it that, you know, when God spoke to Abraham about sacrifice your son and then he changes his mind, he's like, that is so stressful. And then the Holy sure Spirit, like, and they were just like, why, why does God do that? Like, why does God like stressing people out? And, and the Holy Spirit just ministered to me. Abraham wasn't stressed. Yeah. Uh -huh. Abraham wasn't confused. So we're looking at the story from the outside That's in, true. questioning God. Yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. And the person, you know, like in yeah. question, yeah had an understanding of how God works with him. Yeah. You know, even when you look at Job, yes, Job went through, you know, some of the seasons where he, he went into dialogue with the Lord. But when you read about Job, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to throw in the towel. But he did it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's really true. So, but the, the person you're yeah. reading about yeah. is not reacting the way you said you would. Yeah. And so it really brings perspective back to what you're saying mm -hmm. that you can't hold, you know, the faithfulness of God based on your perspective of someone else's life. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's the difference between participant grace and spectator grace. Yes. You know, when you're, at, we have friends, um, he just passed recently, 10 years of struggling with, with a brain cancer. Mm. Um, we lived two houses down from them. Mm. Their, their boys played with my boy. In fact, Jenna Lee, she would call and say, Sheila, Tate's in the street, he's naked. He's closer to your house than mine. Can you grab him? <laughs> and faithful couple who love, love, yeah. love the Lord. Yeah. And, but, you know, in the, in the end, um, 
it was so hard because you, he's got four boys, you know, and, and his darling wife. And, and his answer, I mean, his attitude was always, why not me? Why, why wouldn't I go through this? And maybe, mm -hmm. maybe I was put on this earth for this. Mm -hmm. And that's when I came to understand there's a participant grace for the yeah. person that's in it. That's yeah. right. And the there's a spectator that. grace. Yeah. It's not the same. It's that's like you right. look on and you think, why, Lord? Because he's the, trusting the Lord. He's yeah. absolutely <laughs> trusting the Lord. Yeah. And remember the very last day I saw him, he passed a few hours later. He was in hospice and he couldn't speak, but um, he opened his eyes and I said to him, you're so close. I mean, can you almost hear his voice? Mm -hmm. And just this tear ran down his mm -hmm. cheek and this smile. And I thought, yeah. this is yeah. what we're living for. Yeah. Well yeah. done, well yeah. done. So wow. yeah, I think that's right. It's trusting that God is good all the time to people who put their trust in him. That's right. I mean, when we're in the middle of suffering, um, you know, you're thinking of like, what is hopeful about this right now? But I actually, recently the Lord was teaching me about what it means to be blessed. And in culture and society, you know, we think about blessings based on what is celebrated. No one celebrates suffering, right? No one is like, oh wow, that is so terrible, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, it's not a thing. But the reality is that suffering, trials, all of this are simply birth pains. And they're birth pains to a testimony. They're birth pains to the very, to the next season of your life. They're birth pains to what is celebrated in culture. Um, and so to look at that suffering, you know, to look at that season or whatever might be going on as a womb, right? Not, not the tomb, you know, not the grave. It's not the end of, of your life, right? But as a womb, that something is beginning here, that God is using this to do something in my life. And honestly, I would even say in those times, read about Jesus. Re read his story. His story was not void of suffering. But out of that, it, it was there was something on the other side of it, right? It was birth pains for what he was pregnant with for the world. And so it's just to come back to that place of truth. Not what is suffering in culture, in society, but what is suffering in the eyes of God. And when you see it, when you have that perspective shift, it changes everything. There was something I've been reflecting on lately is how the gifts of the spirit or the fruits of the spirit rather are not seasonal mm -hmm. you know they're not part-time and so if these are the fruits of the spirit then no matter what we go through in life we should still exude joy mm -hmm. we should exude peace we should exude kindness and all of that and so even going back to when Jesus would say you know the peace that I give you surpasses all understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so even the things that you cannot comprehend in this world, the things that you can't even wrap your mind around, like, God, why is this happening? But there is a peace that is upon you yeah. because of your where your anchor is in, that your trust mm -hmm. is in the Lord. Yeah. The impact of your life, it's a narrow path. Yeah. And so when no's come up, it's for me, it's the boundaries. It reminds me that I need to stay within the boundaries yeah. of the path that God has for me, yeah. not the path that I could make up for myself, not the path that I, you know, or people are, are giving me the idea, like, you should do this or you should do that. And so when your hope is in God, mm -hmm. a no to me is always a blessing because it says, okay, God, I'm within my boundaries. Yeah. You know, if that's not for me, you can take it away. I want to stay within the boundaries of my life so that I could be the most effective and impactful with the time that I have. That's good. But I think too, um, to your point, it helps us to live with us, you know, in light of eternity yeah. and be thinking about, living almost with a sense of urgency, yeah. not, in, not in an emergent way or an erratic way, but really just staying supremely focused on what you were speaking about. Mm -hmm. That supernatural undercurrent of God is, God is at work behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. He is in all of the intimate details mm -hmm. to his end and to his perfect will and purpose. Yeah. And it's, I, I don't know, for me, I'm just constantly praying like, Lord, take my will away. Like I lay my own will mm -hmm. down. I lay my thoughts about how this day, mm -hmm. hour by hour with my tiny young children, um, <laughs> you know, who are in the middle of doing that, sure. you, you know, I'm going to throw myself on the ground yeah. and throw a tantrum. <laughs> I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to tell you with my words that I don't want to do what you just want me to do. This. I'm just going to, you know, cause a big scene in the store. Yeah. But it reminds me constantly that my job in discipling them is to, to do that and to allow God to disciple me on the journey of, okay, you're, you're at work doing something bigger. 
And because my ways aren't your ways, it's about that daily minute by minute laying down mm -hmm. of the things that I want. And, and Lord, I'm just ready to pick up whatever mantle, whatever vision you've cast for the life that I'm supposed yeah. to lead. Yeah. I want that. I need that. Show me. Yeah. Let me walk in that daily. Because yeah. mm -hmm. even one of my favorite scriptures is many are the plans of a man, yeah. but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. And that to me is an anchor because, you know, especially when you're creative, you have many plans. <laughs> you could get, in, I could get inspired by trees, by yeah. breathing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have so many plans. And, but at the end of the day, to so recognize it is the purpose of God mm -hmm. over my life that will stand. Yeah. No, because even when you think of in um, Revelation, right, it correlates the end times as lawlessness will abound mm -hmm. yeah. and the gospel will be, would reach the ends of the earth. Yeah. And, then and then the, the end, end will come. come. Right. And so there is such a connection where God set, sees, oh, where there is darkness, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. now you should be the light. The light is because highlighted. when you, and, and there's something contagious about that, that and it will draw many to him. Mm -hmm. And so I do think that even the state of hopelessness, sometimes, not even sometimes, I believe that the way God uses it, because hopelessness exposes something. Yeah. Yes. Right. You cannot be hopeless um, if you have the word in you. Mm -hmm. So it exposes emptiness. It exposes what is void. Yeah. And in the midst of what is void, now God says, now let me fill it up mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. my word. Let me fill it up. So when we see it in the nation, when we see it in the world, yeah. it is such a time for believers to rise up and be the light yeah. because yeah. now you are presenting the word and you're pointing right. people to Jesus who they need yeah. and who they will find their hope in. And so I think it starts from even especially for me, the Lord had to just, um, you know, I became a student again in that area of understanding hope where I was looking at the world and the Lord was showing me, he said, what you see is the evidence of what is. People are void. People are empty. And it takes a shaking for that to be revealed. Yeah. And so when it's revealed, it's not for you to look at it and feel like, God, where are you? He said, I'm right here. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's I'm in the great midst, perspective, I'm in the Stephanie. midst of all of it, yeah. but I need it to be what it is right. in order for, for him him to become present. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.